Okay, this is Roger Mud Fossil University. I've been working with Jody on the uh, Sapphire Project Part 2, and he came on to this part about bio, uh, biological transmutations right in, in space. Now, every day, they, all the heavy metals come from these big um, events in stars. That's all, they were all made inside of a star. That is not correct. They are biological. Now, this is biological transmutation, which you will hear what Thorn, uh, uh, Wall Thornhill has to say about this. Obviously, they're not taking this in science, but th the particles in space are literally aromatic hydrocarbons, exactly the same as is given off by a gas grill when you cook meat. All right, I study space, I study rocks, I study decay, I study decomposition, and I study the chemistry that would be given off and is given off. And as astronauts say, when they come out from their spacewalks and take their helmets off, it smells like steak. They have this that smells like burnt metal or steak, and well, now the reason it's, it doesn't smell exactly like steak is there's not enough oxygen in the outer space to give it that real good combusted smoke smell. But every time you see the comets twist in, and the comas evacuating out of there, which is those streams of gas, those are literally the same gases that spew out of the meat that is on your gas grill and they come out of blood vessels which is the main source of the fluid that creates these hydrocarbon aromatic molecules okay so here's what wall uh, thornhill has to say and um about this this goes way back this guy detected these molecules or decided they were being transmutated in space just for some reason other than biology and it's not every single particle is from biology published important research demonstrating low energy biological transmutations of the chemical elements which surprise surprise falls outside mainstream physics and is not part of the scientific discourse, according to Wikipedia. However, the Sapphire Project is now verifying low-energy nuclear transmutations. You see these particles? These particles shouldn't be existing just floating around out here because they're heavy particles. They're not supposed to be out here. They're supposed to be only made in, in um, stars when they collapse and explode. Well, guess what? These are what gives off when aromatic, aromatic, aromatic hydrocarbons are emitted from gassing off blood metals and minerals. Exactly what happens. They burn off and they gas off. And I'm going to show you something right here because this is a meteorite. That's a meteorite. You see how it's all scorched and, and that came, that's blistered. That is, that, that in a fire this doesn't happen. That's blistered like seared. And that, my friend, is blood. And that I have matched up to Comet 67P and that stalk and that ball is identical to 67P. That is blood. I've looked at it and rehydrated it under the microscope. It is blood. This was a giant's fingertip. Laugh all you want. This is the arterial side that had the red blood and exploded coming through space. This is the black blood side, as you can see, which is the vein side, which does not explode. It's a different chemistry. The red explodes. The black stays intact. Black intact. Uh, and that is a meteorite, and that could be tested right now for what it represents biologically, because I can almost guarantee you that deep inside this structure will be red, will be enough blood to test. And I'm going to show you other ones right now.
This is a uh, tendon ball from a from a um, meteorite, and that is all blistered off, and that is the blood that boiled off the red blood side. The black blood side did not, and that is the ball and this stalk, which is identical to Comet 67P. You see that? You see even this up here with the holes in the top? Exact same thing, and that is a tendon ball. And there's going to be blood in there. This is from a meteorite. This can be tested. That's all blistered off. All of the organic stuff, down to what is, is pretty solid, is blistered off. That's a giant fingertip from a giant's finger. Space is littered with life. Now, in the other pictures I showed, you see these structures here? Those are the same fabric that was inside of the other tendon balls that I showed. See, that's the outside of the tendon balls once they erode. It's just like common 67P. Here's the little boxes you have saw on 67P. Same thing. So, I guess it's just time to deal with it. Life is everywhere. As above, so below. Right, now that is a lung. That is a giant lung that was filled with red blood, which is iron, FeO2 and O3, ferrous iron. And you see how it's scorched off here and burnt up and blistered and all that? Now, this is a fingertip. It didn't have as much volatile organic chemistry. You see, the blood did boil off. The blood, the red blood was here, it boiled off. The black blood didn't. This is filled with red blood lungs, primarily, and they boil off and do that. Now, I'm going to show you something else. Fingers have blood only on one side. That's a fingertip there, too. Look at this. That's a fingertip. And you see what's coming out of it right here? That's the blood on the right hand side, which is the vein side, I mean the artery side. And they, it blew right out here, and they end up call, becoming uh, garnets and uh, crystals, and that's the bottom of the finger. And on the other side, it didn't blow out because that's the vein side. There's an artery and a vein. You can see that little bump there on the left. The bump is always the vein side, because veins have clamps, and you find them, they, they, they end up making a bump right where the clamp was, and that just happens to be where it was. Now, that is an iron lung that has smelted. Smelting means putting it in a furnace and removing all the organic stuff until you end up with iron. And you know what the, the Vikings used to actually use bog ore. Now, if you've ever seen bog people, they say they're, they, they're preserved in them, these bogs. Well, their iron in their bodies collects in there and then they smelt it and they end up creating iron out of it. It's not very good iron, but at least they get some smelted iron. That was the Vikings. Now, this is a, a lung. It's been DNA certified. That's the depression of the heart. It's a left human lung. It's been certified DNA human, and we took it out of the red blood underneath. Very sterile conditions. Bleach. I, you know, it's, it's no... So forget that kind of nonsense argument. So, oh, you must have this, you must have done that. No, I know what I'm doing. And I did it correctly. And there's three tests, and they were dense with DNA because they came out of red blood, red blood areas. And underneath, you scrape the surface and you get it clean and then you go underneath and you take the sample. It doesn't take much, it only takes a half a gram or something. And um, three samples were sent down there of this one and two other ones. They all came back DNA, human, because I knew they were human first of all because I had an anatomist look at it. I had a uh, CAT scans of them. And um, there, there was no question when I found them. I mean, look at this here. <coughs> this is a human finger. 
That's a human fingertip. I broke it off here to get inside to see the red blood. I mean the black, this is the vein side. This is the artery side where the red blood would be. That's a fingertip. And that's underneath, that's the pads of the finger. The same you have on yours. And these angles right here is where ligaments lock in just like that on both sides. And that is why your fingers can do all that sort of stuff. See, that's the black blood area. That's where the red blood area is. <laughs> so I have a lot of evidence here. And it's all, stuff I'm pointing to is all DNA certified. All right, this is, an, this is another lung. Or it could be a heart, I don't know. But it was a saturated blood organ. Now, you can see on the edges, this is like the fascia, the, the tunica, whatever it was that co coated it. And in here is the red and the black blood. And that's the red blood, and that's the black blood. That is vein and artery. There is no other way to explain this. Obviously, this is cut in half. It was a meteorite, and then they etched it with some acids. And that shows there's all these different mineral chemistry within that iron. It's not straight iron. There's a lot of different chemistry, and that's why you get all these different crystals. 